This is the first in a series of videos in which I'm undertaking a new project. You've probably seen in previous videos that I put together a power supply based on the Ryden RD6006 switching controller. Um, the 6006 is just this front portion and the case and the internal supply I purchased separately. It's based on a supply like this. You've probably all seen these uh, very cheap Chinese switch mode supplies very good for what they are, cheap, uh, quite high output, um, but in the lab they do produce a few issues. Most notably they generate a lot of uh, EM noise and we saw that in a previous video where I was trying to probe the output of this supply and on the scope we uh, saw some very large signals that were actually inductive coupled noise from the internal switching supply. So what I want to do is make a, another one of these um, but based on an internal linear supply and then I want to compare the two in the lab and see uh, how they perform. Now when I started looking at this, um, anyone that's familiar with uh, this supply will know that the output is quite high, it's a 360 watt supply which is very high output for a lab supply and of course the problem that you have when you try and make a linear version is this is quite a small case um, and so even though it's quite deep it's not very wide and as ever I always overrate components so I would need at least a 400 uh, VA transformer for the linear supply for this and it won't fit into the case even a, a toroidal transformer you'd struggle to get one that would fit into a case this size I think you can just about do it but they are probably several hundred pounds and I didn't want to spend that amount on uh, this supply. So what I've done instead is taken a slightly different approach and part of the reason for the approach I intend to take is as you know from my channel I like to uh, try and encourage engineering and inventiveness and there are techniques you can use with transformers that I've used in the past that um, a fairly off the beaten track and not very widely used and for good reason you do have to be careful using uh, some techniques so the first thing when I looked at this was okay it's not very wide but it's quite a deep case and I do have quite a lot of old transformers lying around I've rewound hundreds of transformers over the years and uh, do tend to wind most of my own and I had a couple of uh, transformers sitting around from a previous project these are 225 uh, VA transformers and I have two in fact I've got quite a few but uh, these are the two I picked they're actually identical transformers uh, ignore the different colour wire that's just what I had at the time uh, and I wound these years ago for a particular project um, but they are the ideal size for this case and they do leave plenty of space for some uh, smoothing caps in here as well which also need quite a lot of capacity in this case and um, they're the right height still will make best use of the internal space that I have uh, but then comes the issue of okay I've got these but of course they're the wrong voltage I'll just get the supply out of the way okay we'll take a look at the first transformer as I say they are identical I use the same uh, thickness wire same number of turns so they'll both be the same in terms of their uh, output voltages uh, incidentally, if you are going to start winding your own transformers, be very careful uh, how you go about it. Uh, I've done a lot of these and transformers can be a bit um, difficult sometimes if you get the number of turns wrong on the primary. Uh, you can end up overheating the transformer and it could be a, a potential uh, fire hazard. So make sure you understand how to wind a transformer and avoid saturating the core. Winding transformers is probably one of the few times when I envy the US electrical system. You have life much easier over there uh, when it comes to transformers. Uh, you can get away with smaller uh, core sizes um, because you're running at 60 Hz rather than 50. You've got a 20% advantage over us. Um, we run at 50 Hz here in the UK. And also, of course, um, being lower mains voltage, you only need half the number of turns on the primary. So much easier to wind transformers in the uh, US than it is in the UK. Okay, but um, that said, I'll connect this up to the mains. 
Um, and again, be careful if you do start probing around randomly with transformers. I know this transformer, I wound it to know exactly how many turns there are on each winding. But um, if you don't know the transformer, then just be very wary. Um, it might be, uh, it might have high voltage outputs on the secondary, or um, it can be difficult sometimes to determine the primary and secondary on some transformers. Okay, okay so I'll get this connected to the mains. Now I know that this is wound as a two 18 volt secondaries. In fact, it's also got two 12 volt secondaries as well, which I've clipped off. I've reused this transformer in a number of projects, as you can see. Uh, we'll get it connected to the mains. I'll power it up. And what I can do now is just do a check on the uh, secondaries. So we'll connect the test meter to, we'll start with these two. Now one thing to bear in mind when you're doing something like this is you can see that I'm getting a reading on the meter and because we've got a lot of um, kind of stray magnetic fields when working with uh, transformers like this, it's easy to be misled into looking at uh, voltages that don't actually exist. You can see I'm getting four something odd volts there but they, I know these two uh, terminals are not on the same winding uh, so that they are independent of each other so one thing I tend to do when taking readings like this is I connect a uh, relatively high value resistor across the test meter so I'll just do that now okay so I've now got a 150 ohm resistor across the meter terminals and the value you use is up to you just make sure it's high enough so you're not going to set fire to it and as you can see what it's done, it's kind of quietened down the readings I'm getting on the test meter. So it's given me now true readings, whereas before I was getting kind of stray readings due to the high input impedance of the meter. Some meters have a low input impedance, but I tend not to use that in case I make a mistake connecting it up. I don't want to blow the meter up. Uh, so what I can do now is look to see what the actual winding voltages are. So if I transfer to this terminal, we can see it's just over 18 volts, uh, which is what I was expecting, and the other two will give us the same voltage. Uh, what I'm doing here is just trying to make sure that uh, I haven't made a mistake with these uh, transformers and I fully understand the voltages that I'm going to get out of them. So the next thing we'll do is we'll look at the uh, turns per volt. Now, Again, I know what it is because I wound these transformers and if you're winding using just a bare core, so if you bought a core and it's not already wound, then make sure you calculate the correct number of turns for the primary and the correct wire gauge. They're relatively straightforward calculations but you do need to be fairly careful and uh, don't mix up standard uh, transformers with uh, toroidal transformers because they are very different in terms of their calculations. So what I'm going to do now is just demonstrate the number of turns per volt that we have with this particular transformer. Okay, so all we need to do is I'll power it off and just I'm just going to put a single wire loop around the transformer core. And once I've done that, I'll connect the test meter to the ends of this piece of wire. And this is now going to give us a single turn on the transformer so be careful you don't short these two ends together because you will get a very high current flowing through this winding uh, but do make sure that they're terminated roughly on a, a full single turn of the transformer and what we'll see on the meter then is the uh, voltage for a single turn of the transformer so I'll power it up again and we can see we're getting around 0.4 volts and um, don't forget we just still have the resistor connected across this so it's uh, we're not getting noise and what you can see is as you uh, change the position of the probes it doesn't make a great deal of difference the important thing is that once you pass the wire through the core of the transformer then unless you go back into the core and back through again then you're going to get a fairly consistent uh, value for the reading you're seeing on the meter. The important thing is uh, any major part of the turn is what you're trying to measure. So we're getting about 0.4 volts per turn here. I'll just turn the transformer off. So forget a 
calculator. Probably don't need this, but... Uh, so if we want a 240 volt primary, so I'm putting 240 divided by 0.4, that's going to give us 600 turns, which is how many turns we would need on the primary, and that's how many I happen to know this has, and then you can calculate the number of turns you want on the secondary. What I want for the secondary on this is 48 volts, and the reason I want 48 volts is I'm looking for something slightly over 60 volts uh, once it's been rectified and smoothed. And the reason I want that is, of course, that's what we need to feed into the RD6006, and that would match the voltage that we were getting out of the switching supply on the first unit that I built. And to, to get that, take the raw voltage, uh, the RMS voltage, which, as I said, if we take 48 volts, uh, and then multiply that by 1.4 to give us the rectified voltage, that gives us 67.2 volts and then subtract from that around 1.5 volts. And the reason we're subtracting 1.5 volts is because the uh, bridge rectifier we'll be using will drop about 1.5 volts. So that gives us around 66 volts, which is what we're looking for. I don't want to go too high because that would mean having to use much bigger capacitors for the smoothing. The next step is to determine how many windings we will need on the secondary. So that's quite easy to do. We want 48 volts and divide that by 0.4 and that gives us 120 turns. So we need 120 turns on the secondary. At the beginning of this video I said that I'd like to try and encourage inventiveness and people to look at different ways of doing things. So that's why I'm going to deviate now from the standard way that you would normally approach this. What you'd normally do is wind a 240 volt primary 48 volt secondary and then you do the same with the second transformer. Because I know these transformer cores are identical I do have another option here which is the option I'm going to take and it's probably one you might not have seen before and if you do decide to do something like this you need to be very careful this is a fairly difficult thing to get right and you need to be quite careful when you're winding the transformer to make it work correctly. So I'll just get this out of the way and then just give you a, a quick sketch as to what I have in mind. Okay, so using my DaveCAD Junior CAD system, uh, what we have is of course a transformer. We've got the primary and we have a second transformer which is identical. So they are two identical transformers. What you would normally do is connect the inputs in parallel and then the outputs you can configure however you want, whether you wind them as two 48 volt uh, windings and put them in parallel or whether you wind them as two 24 volt windings and put them in series is entirely up to you. There are advantages and disadvantages depending on which route you want to take. But I'm going to do something slightly different here. Instead of winding these as two 240 volt windings and having to wind 600 turns on each one. I'm actually going to wind them as 120 volt transformers. I'm going to connect the primaries in series. So this is not to be confused with a normal way of doing this where this would be a single core. Having said that, as far as each transformer is concerned, it won't know about the other one unless there's a fault somewhere or unless you don't get these properly balanced. They're not absolutely critical but you do need to get them fairly close. And What I will then do is wind the output as 24 volts on each watt and what I can then do is connect these in series. Again you have an option here where you could essentially use a centre tap system and make your rectification a bit more efficient but the advantage of me doing this is that I'm only going to need 300 turns on each of the two primaries rather than 600. In theory I can use the same gauge wire that's already on here but the thicker you can make the wire then the less prone you're going to get to the transformer overheating as long as you're not saturating the core. 
uh, you're going to make the transformer a bit more efficient by reducing the resistance losses in the primary winding. So I can not only have less copper, if you like, in this um, uh, primary winding uh, in terms of its length, but I can make the wire thicker. So that's going to make winding it a lot easier. It'll give me more space on the core and then going for 24 volt rather than two uh, 48 volts um, on, the pro on the secondaries, then what I can do, of course, is reduce the number of turns on the secondary as well. So instead of having 120, I can just go for 60 turns on each of the two uh, secondaries. So I've reduced the amount of work required to produce these transformers by a huge amount and winding toroidal transformers is a bit of a pain to be honest, it's, uh, especially with thicker wire. So just to make sure that uh, we understand what we're doing and that um, there's some likelihood it's going to work, I'm just going to mock this up with the transformers that we have. So I'll just get those wired up and we'll come back and look at how they are working together. Okay, so I now have these wired up exactly as per the wiring diagram. So the two primaries are in series. I've got it connected to a 240 volt supply, it's not switched on yet. And I've wired two of the secondaries in series as well. Now because these are not yet rewound to 120 volts, then the output's gonna be half what it should be because we are splitting the uh, two inputs across 240 volts. So they're only getting 120 volts each. And that's the theory of it. Now if this is working the way it should, we should find that what we'll get is 18 volts on the output because we are doubling the output by wiring two of the secondaries in series. So we should get 18 volts showing on the meter. So I'll just power that up. And we are indeed getting 18 volts. I've still got the resistor connected across these, so there is a light load on this, but what I will be doing before I go any further is fully loading this up, making sure it does meet the uh, power requirement and that I don't have a tendency for either the transformers to overheat. But if you do want to check that the two transformers you're going to use are fairly well matched, then put a, a fairly light load on it and what you would then do is swap over the way that they're connected so you'd reverse one of the secondaries in relation to the other. So I'll just do that now. And because the two transformers in theory should be giving the same output, you should be getting something fairly close to zero showing on the meter. We're getting about 0.5 volts, so that's fairly good. They're not perfectly matched. These weren't wound with the intention of connecting them like this, so there might be one or two turns more. Looks like there's one turn more uh, on one than the other. Uh, but obviously when I wind them like I intend to, then I'll be very careful to make sure that they have the same number of turns. And I will check them before I uh, connect them into the power supply to make sure they're giving identical outputs and to do that during this test I'll need to get something uh, much less than 0.4 volts coming out of the, uh, the meter and that will prove that they have the same number of turns on the secondaries uh, and on the primaries. Uh, so that's uh, something, to, something to bear in mind is that um, remember that the primary and secondaries are ratiometric so that if you do have different numbers of turns on the uh, primary, then it will influence the uh, turns per volt of the secondary and they do need to be exactly the same if you're going to wire them like this. So I will need to be much more careful but because there's only half as many turns to put onto the um, primary and secondary uh, that task will be very much easier. So that's it for this video. Any comments uh, are welcome. Naturally this is um, going to be a fairly interesting project to see how this works. There are other advantages in wiring transformers like this, which I'll come to as we go through the project. Um, but just bear in mind, if you want to do something like this, be very careful to make absolutely certain that you do match your transformers properly. To a certain degree, uh, the imbalance um, is not absolutely critical, but it does need to be fairly close for this to work as it's intended to.